Welcome to Gallery Thomas. We're happy to take you around our show. I'm Silke Thomas. I'm Raymond Thomas. And I'm Jörg Pahl. And together, we'll have a look. So let's start right here. Yes, let's go to my favorites. Oh, right. yes, yes. Let's start here. Uh, this is a, a, a Pierre Solage painting from the French painter Pierre Solage. It's a late one from 2013. He started already in uh, the late 70s uh, to be specific about black. You see, it's not just about the color black, it's about the light behind it. And he's using as well different surfaces like you see a very rough structured here, a kind of matte surface here, and this is very intense, so it's kind of reflective already. So to the Pierre Soulage, we put the sculpture of Katja Strunz, who is also in this case working with the black structures, um, and uh, it looks incredible when you move around, um, just so you see the different, the different areas. Since we are at the entrance hall right now of Gary Thomas, maybe we walk over, have a quick look over to the Peter Halley painting from 2019. Uh, quite recognizable right away because of the coloring, because of the surfaces. And uh, take a look to yourself, uh, for yourself. I think that's, that's really something very special. And we place it right next over here to the uh, uh, Tony Craig. You see the faces coming out on that bronze sculpture. So you see it over here, you see it here on the left side. If you have a closer look, you see really the side of the face. Ralph, well, hello. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Ralph Melcher, and this is a great painting by Lüppertz. Yeah, it's from his Constitution series. He did um, a series on the articles of the fundamental rights of the German constitution. Which is really relevant nowadays. Yes, absolutely. And uh, this is Article 3, which is about um, uh, the equality of everyone before the law. And he uses his typical um, symbolism because he wants to describe an ideal, an idyllic state, if all rights in the constitution are fully available for everyone. So this is, couldn't be um, more important at this point of time. This is true. So we also have um, works by Fernando Botero here. We have a, pa a painting here with the still life with the playing cards going from the year 94. Um, I mean, obviously the still lifes are something that, as in all of Botero's works, go back to very um, usual topics of painting, the still life we have, uh, still life with playing cards from Cezanne and for other people, and this is very, very classical, beautiful Botero painting in great, great colors and, um, and an openness, which I really like. Apart from that, we have the two sculptures, a little horse with saddle, a tabletop horse with saddle, a little beauty, absolutely wonderful in the detail, and we have the medium-sized horse here. Obviously the horse is something that is also um, a relevant topic in art history. His father was a salesman. He was working um, by traveling on his horse through the Colombian mountains and landscape to um, sell his goods. So the horse and the man on the horse was always something that is of big interest um, for Fernando Botero. And the horse itself is just as relevant in art history and he always adored working on this subject. So we have the two of them here, and we can move on to our exhibition space here. Um, there's a wonderful sculpture here by Eduard Chida. It's a Lurha. He's um, obviously uh, one of the, or the famous Basque artists um, from and Lura is the Basque word for earth. So this is um, a wonderful piece. You have to look really at the details and at all the, um, all the structures which he put in there um, working with his knife. Um, it is really something that went through the process. The earth went through the process of fire and took its shape by this transformation. So that is, um, whether he works in iron, whether he works in other methods, it's always that this transformational process creates the special magic of the works that are interacting with the space. Since we are talking already about a kind of material, let's have a look as well to the lead paintings, especially the pair, the couple over here. 
which is done by the artist, by the German artist Günther Förg. And uh, you might see it is painted on lead. I mean, lead is even a little bit toxic, but it's flexible, it's movable, it's having a kind of matte surface. And he, of course, obvious, you see it's a pair, so he did the crossing and the coloring. There's a great painting by Dorazio here, Piero Dorazio. Um, the Italian painter, and this is an absolutely astonishing painting to my feeling. Um, the way that he sets the colors on the crude canvas uh, is just incredible. And actually it does remind strongly of the uh, famous Mondrian painting, Boogie Woogie, which is in the museum in Amsterdam. Um, this one is um, from 1979. Um, it's a later painting, but I just think it's very, very stunning knowing Dorazio, how much he refers to or is interested in spatial relationships. He studied architecture early on before he started painting. And um, I think this is just one of the paintings that really work on that kind of spatial idea. Apart from that, I really love the coloring. I think it's so fresh and, and happy. And um, it's, it's a very interesting, complex um, structure that looks very simple in the, on the first sight. Here we have a work by Anselm Kiefer. Um, and uh, it features uh, a typical motif, which is this cloth here in the middle, which symbolizes, in this case, the Winsbraut by Oskar Kokoschka, and he has an inscription here für Okadi Winsbrod, for Oskar Kokoschka, and his famous painting of the Winsbrod, which is nobody else than Alma Mahler, his um, most important muse, so to say. Looking at these few sculptures which are here, the Tony Crack and these two pieces we have here, then look at this little tiny piece of this uh, Eve Klein, which he did in the early 60s, in connection with the first exhibition in Krefeld at the time when Professor Wember made the show of E. Klein, which, by the way, almost cost him his position as being a museum's director because there was so much avant-gardistic. Then you have the Chilida and you have here non Pike. Uh, so you have in this room very different ways of expressing what the artist wants to say in totally different ways. I think it's very exciting to have just a quick glance to each of them to see how far the range is of expressing themselves. Here we see a painting by Hermann Nitsch, the Austrian artist, uh, very much known uh, for his mystical theater. And uh, this was a kind of big theater he did at his studio with like hundreds of people and he's using as well relicts like you see here which were done doing that action with a band aid or for example here in paintish elements and a very straightforward clean canvas which is kind of untypical normally he, he expresses the entire canvas and in this, this case it's more kind of reduced a little bit. Coming now from the work on canvas, we go over to a work on paper by Sigmar Polke. Sigmar Polke, of course, very much known as a kind of alchemist of paint. Here he used a kind of spray, which allowed him as well to go in different directions, which is uh, as well this kind of work he used as well in the uh, Farbproben in the 80s, uh, which were the preparation for the uh, big uh, exhibition at the Biennale Venice. But this one is later done, it's on, and it's on paper, and he used a lot more colors in here. So why don't we walk over? And here we also have a piece um, which is moving, which is a beautiful um, piece by Tonga Lee from 1955. It's very early, he didn't do the moving pieces before 1953, so this is actually only two years in. And um, I think you don't have to say much, you just have to watch all of these shapes moving with each other, um, painting themselves all of the time. Always something new. And this takes you to the second part of our video. And we'll do an extra video with the modern works here, the second part of Gallery Thomas. So see you later. <laughs>